You know, sweetheart, when I was young, I had this wonderful habit of creating small, imaginary worlds. One of my favorite pastimes was building a tiny toy home, carefully arranging every detail to reflect the ideal life I envisioned. In that little world, I lived with my family and my future life partner. It was such a simple game, but it brought me immense joy. I loved imagining the daily routines, the shared moments, and the happiness that came from taking care of my partner. It felt like a glimpse into the future I dreamed of, and it made me feel incredibly good inside. I would often talk to my parents about getting married, even though I was just a child. Those conversations were filled with excitement and anticipation. My parents would smile and tell me that one day, I would meet the best person out there, someone who would love and cherish me just as I deserved. Their words filled me with hope and happiness, and I remember feeling so content, believing that life would unfold just as beautifully as I imagined in my little toy home. Those were the days when life felt so pure, so simple, and so good. As I grew older, I carried that sense of innocence and optimism with me into the world. I had a pure and innocent heart, one that trusted people easily and always wanted to help those in need. I was the kind of person who respected others, cared deeply for everyone around me, and believed in the goodness of people. I was a good person, or at least I tried my best to be. But as time passed, I began to notice that not everyone saw the world the way I did. Slowly, people started making fun of me. They saw my kindness as a weakness and began to use me to get their things done. With each bad experience, my heart began to change. It was as if walls were slowly forming around it, each one built from the pain of being hurt or taken advantage of. I started withdrawing from the world, becoming more cautious and less open. The naive trust one once had in others faded away, replaced by a growing sense of skepticism. I found myself feeling increasingly isolated, even when I was surrounded by people. I would be in the middle of a crowd, yet feel completely alone. It was a strange and painful realization, and it made me cry more times than I can count. I would often find myself wondering why people didn't understand me, why my friends made fun of me, and why they kept breaking my heart over and over again. The only place where I felt safe was with my parents. They were my refuge, the ones I could always turn to when the world outside became too harsh. They noticed the changes in me, the way the shine in my eyes had dulled over time. They saw how I had become more guarded, more cautious, and less trusting. But instead of telling me to change back to the way I was, they gave me some of the most valuable advice I've ever received. They told me to always make myself a priority, to put my own needs and well-being first. They taught me that I shouldn't expect love, care, and attention from others, but rather, I should focus on loving myself as much as I wanted to be loved by someone else. Taking their advice to heart, I began to focus more on myself. I started doing what was best for me, regardless of what others thought. I stopped caring whether people called or reached out to me. If they did, great, if they didn't, it didn't bother me anymore. This shift in mindset wasn't easy, and it wasn't long before people around me began to notice. They started calling me selfish and self-centered, accusing me of changing and becoming someone they didn't recognize. But this time, their words didn't cut as deep as they once might have. I knew I was doing the right thing by choosing myself, by protecting my heart and prioritizing my well-being. For a long time after that, I didn't really trust anyone else. I kept my guard up, always cautious and careful about who I let into my life. That was until you came along. When we first met, I wasn't sure what your intentions were, and I was hesitant to open up. But over time, you showed me that you were different. You were honest and sincere, someone who wanted love, care, and affection just like I did. With you, it felt like I was seeing a version of myself, 
someone who understood what it meant to be hurt but still wanted to love deeply. You made me feel happy in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. Thank you for being the person I've been searching for since I was young but never found until now. You understood me, cared for me, and gave me all the love, care, and attention I had longed for. Through you, I've come to realize that the one who is meant for us will come when we are truly ready, when we've learned all the lessons that life has in store for us. Now, I understand that those lessons, as painful as they were, were necessary to prepare me for the love we share today. There are times when I find myself becoming distant, not just from you but also from my friends and family. It's a feeling that creeps in gradually, almost imperceptibly, until I realize that I'm pulling away from everyone around me. It's as if my heart desires to retreat, to withdraw into a warm cocoon where I can be alone, away from the noise and the expectations of the world. During these periods, I feel a deep restlessness within me, a kind of agitation that makes me irritable and easily annoyed, even if someone is simply trying to talk to me or offer comfort. This state of mind used to disturb me profoundly because, despite the withdrawal, I never felt at peace. I was caught in a paradox, I longed for solitude, yet when I achieved it, I felt empty and unfulfilled. I often likened my feelings to that of a fish taken out of water, suffocating, struggling, and desperate to return to a place where I could breathe freely. It wasn't just a matter of feeling down, it was as if I had lost touch with myself. On some days, I would experience profound sadness, a sense of melancholy that seemed to have no clear cause or reason. This emotional turbulence troubled me deeply because it infiltrated every aspect of my life, my work, my relationships, and even my basic enjoyment of everyday activities. In my desperation to find relief from this state, I began searching for solutions. I wanted something that could offer immediate comfort, something that could anchor me when I felt lost. I experimented with various strategies, I listened to soothing music, hoping that the melodies would calm my racing mind. I took long walks, thinking that the fresh air and change of scenery might help me reset. I indulged in my favorite foods, seeking comfort in familiar tastes and smells. I reached out to friends, trying to reconnect and find solace in their company. I even went on vacations, believing that a complete change of environment might be the key to feeling better. But despite all these efforts, nothing seemed to provide the relief I was so desperately seeking. The sense of emptiness persisted, and I began to feel hopeless. Then, one day, something unexpected happened. Almost by accident, I picked up a spiritual book. It was a book that contained stories about how God took birth and helped humans, offering them guidance and support in their times of need. I didn't have high expectations when I started reading, I was simply looking for a distraction, something to occupy my mind for a while. But as I delved into the book, something began to change within me. I can't quite explain how or why it happened, but I started to feel a different kind of joy, a quiet, steady happiness that seemed to emanate from deep within my soul. The more I read, the more peace I felt. It was as if the stories in the book were speaking directly to my heart, offering me the comfort and reassurance I had been searching for all along. I was amazed by the profound impact the book had on me. I hadn't gone to any religious places, hadn't sought out any special rituals or practices, I was simply sitting in my bed at home, reading. Yet, by the time I finished the book, I felt a sense of well-being that I hadn't experienced in a long time. It was as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, and I could finally breathe again. Intrigued by this newfound sense of peace, I found myself returning to the book again and again. Each time I read it, the joy and tranquility it brought me only deepened. It became my refuge, a source of comfort that I could turn to whenever I felt the familiar stirrings of restlessness and sadness. The book seemed to contain a kind of magic, 
a promise that those who read it would see their troubles and pain fade away. And for me, that promise came true. My life began to transform in ways I hadn't imagined. The emotional storms that once plagued me became less frequent, less intense, and I found myself feeling happier, more content, and more connected to the world around me. Now, whenever I feel my mood shifting towards that dark, distant place, I reach for the book, knowing that it will bring me back to a place of peace. I am so grateful to have found something that helps me so profoundly. I don't fully understand how or why it works, but I believe that the words in that book carry a special kind of power, a power that can heal and uplift the soul. I feel incredibly blessed to have discovered this, and I can't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude towards God for guiding me to it. I encourage everyone who reads this message to pick up a spiritual book, no matter what religion you follow. I'm certain that, like me, you will find comfort and peace within its pages. Trust in the process, and let the words speak to your heart. I believe it will help you as it has helped me, bringing light into the darkest corners of your life.